In this section, we are going to learn how to account for current liabilities and contingent liabilities. You know that current liabilities are liabilities that are due within one year or less. Contingent liabilities relate to liabilities that are dependent on some event. Let's first talk about current liabilities. Current liabilities are obligations that are due within one year. There are two types of current liabilities. We know known amounts of current liabilities and estimated amount of current liabilities. All these liabilities are known amounts. Some of them you have seen before, some of them are new to you, so we'll go through most of them. Accounts payable is the first one. Accounts payable relates to liabilities that arise from buying inventory. Typically, if we buy inventory on credit, what we have is an accounts payable. Short-term notes payable can also be used for purchasing inventory, but it's also used for borrowing money, and that's what we're going to talk about. Short-term notes payable are money that we borrow that are due within one year. Let's say that we borrowed $100 for two months. The bank will give us $100 at the beginning, at the time that we borrow. And then two months later, you will pay back the $100 plus any interest that you owe on the loan. If your accounting year end falls in the middle of your loan, so in, before you are required to repay your loan, then you have to accrue interest. Accruing interest means that you know that you have an interest expense, but you have not paid it yet. You will only pay it at the maturity of the note. The accounting treatment of short-term notes payable is identical to short-term notes receivable, except now we're looking at it from the terms of the borrower. So we will be borrowing money, and then we will be repaying money at the end of the loan term with our principal plus any interest that we owe. Let's take a look at an example. On November 1, 2011, John Q. Public, who is a borrower, borrowed $10,000 by signing a three-month 12% note payable at Acme State Bank. First, they want you to prepare the journal entry to record the issuance of the note payable on November 1, 2011. On the date you borrowed the money, the two accounts that are affected are going to be cash and notes payable. We receive cash because we borrowed money, so we debit $10,000 cash and we have a debt, a new debt. Our debts increases, thereby our notes payable is credited $10,000. So your journal entry would have been cash debit 10000 notes payable credit 10000 As you all know, I showed you T accounts first, but T accounts represent ledger accounts, and in our accounting cycle, we first do the journal entries, and then we post them to these T accounts. Now let's look at the second part of this question. Same information as the one that we just looked at. Now they're saying prepare the journal entry to record the accrual of two months interest on December 31st, 2011. So let's see what all this accrual is about. Let's look at a timeline. We borrowed the money on November 1st, 2011, and then we are going to pay the money back on February 1st, 2011, three months later. It's a three-month note. At the end of the three months, you're going to pay back your principal that you borrowed plus any interest. Now, something else happens in the middle of your note term. Somewhere in between, which is December 31st, it is the accounting year end. This means on December 31st, we need to prepare our adjusting entries, prepare an adjusted trial balance, prepare financial statements and close our books in preparation for our next accounting period. So at year end, we need to measure all the expenses that we incurred during that period. The period between 11-1 and 12-31, we have an interest expense. We have to accrue two months of interest. That two months of interest is there because we borrowed money on November 1st. We have used that money for two months, therefore we have an interest expense associated with that. Even though that interest expense is only payable at the end of February, 
we still have to recognize it as an expense in our financial statements. Again, that's what accrual is. So let's go ahead and calculate this interest expense. Your interest expense is equal to 10,000, which is your principal, the amount that you borrowed, multiplied by the interest rate, which is 12%. But you should know that always, 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 interest is stated in t annual terms. So this 12% represents an annual rate. Did we borrow that money for a whole year? No. We've only borrowed the money for two months. This accounting period is only for two months, so we need to prorate that interest for two months. How do you do that? You multiply it by two divided by 12. That gives us an interest expense of $200. Now that you have your $200 interest expense, what you're going to do is you're going to debit interest expense for 200 and credit interest payable for 200. And that is how you prepare the journal entry to record the accrual of two months interest on December 31st, 2011. The interest expense of $200 will be shown on your income statement and the interest payable will be a current liability on your balance sheet. Now the final part to it is they're asking you to prepare the journal entry to record the payment of the note on February 1st, 2012. At the beginning of the accounting year, after closing the books, you had notes payable and interest payable with credit balances of 10000 and 200 each. The credit balance of notes payable represents our principal amount and the interest payable represents our accrued interest that we accrued at the end of December 31st, 2011. Now when we are paying back this note, we are paying back the amount we borrowed, which is 10000 times 12% of interest for three months. So let's look at how much we will be paying back. We will be paying back $10,000 plus 10,000 times 12%, but remember it's only for three months, so we multiply it by three by 12. That gives us 10,000 plus 300, so we are paying back $10,300 in cash. Now let's look at the journal entry. We're going to debit notes payable for 10000 What that does is gets rid of our notes payable on the books. Then we're also going to debit interest payable for 200 What that does is gets rid of our interest payable from the books. Now remember, our interest for the term of the note is 300 We've already accrued 200 so we have $100 of interest expense remaining for 2012, which is the current accounting period. So that becomes an interest expense for the current period. So we're going to debit interest expense for $100. That is an interest expense for 2012. Then we're going to credit the cash. That's how much we're going to pay the 10,300 principal plus interest. So your journal entry is debit notes payable 10,000, debit interest payable 200, debit interest expense 100, that together takes care of your total interest. And then you're going to credit cash 10,300 because we're going to be paying cash to pay off our obligations.